He awoke to the smell of kalbasa sizzling ground gut parts. He awoke from being awake, however, and found himself, as is often the case ten years later, with a beard and hair to the floor and fingernails twisting and spiraling like overgrown plant stalks, his belly a three-hundred-pound tumor with its own set of teeth and various half-formed genital sections, swollen and growing toward one another. Agoraphobia had taken him strong, uprooting his autonomy by a merciless god disease. He was sure it was contagious mutation passed down most likely from his mother, the same way an infant is inflicted with herpes by being kissed by grandma when she is fever blister prone. What truly shocked him, however, was his incapacity to differentiate between waking and dream life. Illusion in either was the reality of all. What concerned him most about these revelations was what had become of his life's work. It only came to him in fragmented segments, some clear, some coded. The merit. We've helped you find, and we can help you. You're successful. You don't have to be God to have a voice that booms from heaven, but for some folks it's the next best thing. Not surprisingly, there's a lot of death. All the waiters were convinced his attack's no longer a happy one. How do you feel, Joe? But I thought it only a drug-induced coma. And I'm bewildered at having sobered up. And may add that I'm experiencing withdrawal symptoms sharp and regular. And how many casualties over the years. Lovers, children, and friends. How many breakdowns exactly. There seems to have been no boundary between slumber and sloth. Symptoms of annihilation. Am I supposed to be lucky to be alive? Not lucky, Joe. A peculiar sectional universal hum. You have to learn to control the dream, eh, Leo? Like the time you jumped out of the car in the ghetto with a single arrow in your crossbow. While our boys were out rounding up Mercedes Benzes. We were immortal by our youth, right? And he just sits and babbles anymore. Indigent schizo babble all to himself about his self problem. Rotted out his brain. Sad energy deterioration right before our sinking eyes. Could be so beautiful. Could be, but it ain't. Could be bloody nightmare adrenaline rush. Seems to be. Or what about that time we improv with that Nebraskan family just outside of Kansas City? Broken down an apocalyptic ghost town, siphling stale air out of rusty gas tanks. And the little one spoke. Nebraska is one big Kansas with a tree in it. No one would answer their door. No one to be found except an old lady leaving at church. Without her, no survival. So we used her complete, even down to stringing her intestines to the bumper as a lifeline, so as not to get separated from the children. And we sent smoke signals to William Burroughs with no response. The old bastard probably relapsed and on the night. Out there, gold and diamonds meant nothing. But yeah, control the dream and reach Seattle. The careless abandon of youth is the purest trade. Can be mastered by all. Flashback. I'm 12 years old and running toward the doors of a local high school. I asked Perry, why are we running? Coco shot the pun and fucked him. Now we gotta ditch his peace. At this moment, without breaking stride, we put the piece out, thirty eight special, and fired it, shooting a stray dog's ear off. 
What did you do that for, fucker? For the fun of it. Let's get out of here before the pigs arrive. Oh, we won't only be answering to the law. We'll end up like the son of a bitch who fucked Coco. The sirens creep up in the background as we round a corner into a locker room. Perry stashes the piece in the toilet, and we scurry back out through the same way we came in. Everyone knows Coco shot the kid, but everyone knows to keep their mouths shut. The police arrive, ask a few questions, and then the after-game party commences. We end up in the old Hayes neighborhood. This five-block section of the city is legendary. You couldn't go two doors down without finding a party. He's where the stomping grounds of Brother Larry Wayne, and where the winds of hell and heaven mingled and coursed. Anything a man could thirst for began and often ended. The dead and living fucked each other, drugged each other, and created a network stronger than blood. So this naturally was the destination of such a festive evening. Young people everywhere, young beautiful everyone and everything, unless of course you were a fag. Back in those days you kept your bisexuality to yourselves, and even the women didn't eat no pussy. But if you could go hetero, every cherry was there for the picking. All the guys who didn't have a chick of their own would gather up a few of their buddies, pick a girl they wanted, get her drunk, and play spin the bottle or strip poker. In the end, every one of us would get our turn on her, and the next day would be just that, another day. There was no such thing as date rape, and none of our sisters felt mistreated or shamed. We may as well have been hippies demonstrating free love in these days before the drag of AIDS. On this particular night, however, we walked in on our Led Zeppelin being passed around Doug's coven. Fat, fat fucking joint bigger than the whole hallway. After reenacting the aforementioned scenario, we partook in the festivity at hand and sank into our social aura. Everything was going smooth. Jack Daniels weed sex. When all of a sudden snakes started crawling all over membrane connected embryonic aliens as Lucy pulled the football out from under Charlie Brown on clouds spring the walls and ceiling. I had tripped before many times, I thought to myself, but what the fuck have I done now? I pulled myself from an angel turned Medusa and stumbled outside where the crimson moon turned into a bloody cunt. PCP was flooding my consciousness, and it was time for a candy bar way up on the hill at the Phillips 66 station. I felt like I was climbing a mountain and had to take a break to bed down for a few minutes on a porch before my friends tracked me down and carried me home to my porcelain god where I exercised my demon hallucinations until I was once again morally Christian vowing never again to partake in such debauchery. Dying. Needless to say, I was back drugging and drinking the very next day. So much for my repentance. Perhaps it was at this reference point in life that my world view began to change. Purgatory, it seems, is where I exist. The definition being trapped in between heaven and hell. What is earth if it is not a place between where we came from where we are going. Anyway, as a member of the now stigmatized Generation X, I profoundly and unshamefully indulged in its symptomatic side effects of drug abuse, criminal behavior, murder, suicide, a whole lot of shocking behavior. I was the king of freaks at one time before my reality made my plight a singular one.
the same time dead friends began to fill the room gunshot wounds road rash the whole vision heaven and hell the duality of all things in our discovered universe this i could not handle but when, when we partook in the wine the cocaine the heroin i awoke twice as stoned and hardly able to move and without the least bit of appetite but the same there's no food to be eaten anyways unless Bologna is a staple of your diet. Unshaven, unclean, gentler drug addict lying in his own sweat in a state of withdrawal delirium. We'll never know exactly where he's at or where he's going. It happens that way, you know. Once we've lost them, where have they gone? It could be a level of purgatory that's irreversible once the step has been taken. But then again, Earth is purgatory. I've said it before and I says it again. A writer should never lose perspective of this, for it is what fans the flames of his desire to escape through work. And the words of Uncle Bill, we're all here to go. That's what we're here for.